Chapter 12, the final chapter, Heaven. In one of his songs, Charlie Peacock sings, I want to live like heaven is a real place. And in one of his songs, Rich Mullins sings, If I weep, let it be as a man who is longing for his home. My first experience of death, at least the death of someone who I love deeply, happened when I was about 10 years old. My grandma died, and it blindsided me. I knew that she was sick and in the hospital, but I never expected her to die. She was such an amazing woman, and all of my memories of her are positive. She was a hugger and a kisser. She always had cookies, candy, and Kool-Aid for us grandkids. And when you're a kid, it just doesn't get any better than that. There were always fun things to do at her house. I most remember spending hours at her house doing puzzles with my sisters. When she died, I was stunned. It hurt very deeply, and it confused me. How could someone so good be taken away from us? And then, quite unexpectedly, something happened at her funeral that I'll never forget. The congregation was singing that classic church song, I Am the Resurrection and the Life. And one of the lines from that song, which is also a line from Jesus in the Bible, jumped out at me and went straight to my heart. He who believes in me will never die. At that moment, I knew, with knowledge far deeper than logic and way beyond words, that my grandma was okay. She was with Jesus, and I'll see her again someday. No agnostic, atheist, or skeptic will ever be able to convince me otherwise. She's in heaven, waiting for me. End of discussion. My grandma's death was my first experience of God that I can remember. I think God knew that my fragile heart needed some love and assurance. And so God just went ahead and he gave it to me supernaturally. What a gift. Thanks, God. In this last chapter of my book, I'd like to encourage you to consider death, even your own death, and what it means. In my years of working with teens, I've learned that tragedy, particularly death, is a time when many people feel very close to God. It's also a time when many others feel quite distant from God. I believe that if we have faith and if we trust in God, death can bring us closer to God, since death causes us to think about eternity. I don't know about you, but I think this world is an awesome place. I love it, and I've been blessed by being able to explore some of its beauty. A quiet Ozark stream, the Rocky Mountains, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Black Hills of South Dakota. Someday I hope to visit the Grand Canyon and Yellowstone. But as beautiful as it all is, my heart longs for even more beauty. I love the people that I've met on this earth. I have great friends, a wonderful family, awesome kids, and an amazing wife. The teens that I've met as a youth minister continue to blow me away with their love and enthusiasm. And yet, as good as those relationships are, my heart longs for more. I long for more because everything in this world, as good and as great as it is, remains imperfect. I also long for more because as much as there's goodness on this earth, both in nature and relationships, there's also a lot of bad stuff too. War, terrorism, disease, pain, hunger, loneliness, broken hearts, fear, and death. I simply refuse to believe that this world is all there is. My heart tells me that there must be more. Jesus promised us that if we get to know him better, we will experience abundant life on this earth. That has been true for me. But this world is not our home. We've been created for eternity, and our hearts cry out for relationships with God and others that will last forever. BFF, best friends forever. It's not just a way that sixth grade girls sign the notes they pass back and forth in math class. It's really God's plan for us to experience for eternity what we've been given a taste of here on earth. Heaven is real, and when we die, it will actually be the beginning of a newer and more full life in heaven, a life that will be 10 billion times better than this one, and it'll go on forever. The Bible actually describes heaven in this way. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast 
of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich food and pure, choice wines. On this mountain he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all the nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. I don't know about you, but to me heaven sounds like the best Catholic wedding reception ever. Great food and drink, good friends, laughing and dancing and partying that never ends. And we'll have the best host ever. One who knows and who will meet all of our deepest desires and needs. Now that's a place I want to be. I know that my grandma's there, along with my mom, and so many other loved ones who've gone before me. And I plan on being there. I encourage you with all of my heart to live in such a way as to make it there. Does your heart long for reunion with loved ones that you've lost? Does your heart desire to spend eternity with those you love here on earth? That is precisely what our Lord promises. We can attain heaven by growing closer and closer every day with the one who wants to be our best friend forever, Jesus.